Hey guys and girls, my name is Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In this episode, trust me, I'm a blacksmith. We're primarily going to be making some really nice spring fullers. These are really good, they work really well. And uh, I'm going to make some hammer eye drifts and a hammer or two. Okay, so the last video I made like this was received really well, so thank you very much. You all seem to enjoy it quite a lot, so I'm going to do another one. Uh, I'm going to get on and make these hammer eye drifts first. I'm going to explain why I'm making two and what they're for and all that stuff. And uh, we're going to go through the video, make the hammer, make the uh, spring fillers. It's going to be a good day. So enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. A big part of hammer making, or blacksmithing in general, is being able to make your own tools. And you may have in the past heard the saying, make a tool to make a tool, and that's never more evident than in the process of making hammers. Back when Alex Steele was back at Baker Street, he often run the evolution of tool making courses. Uh, I, Brian Brazil inspired uh, tool making classes, I believe, where you would go through the process of making all the tools that you need to make a hammer. And then as you make those tools, you uh, then develop a new tool from that tool that you've just made. It's a great theory, it's a really good idea, and it is really embedded in the heart of blacksmithing. If you want to get constant, repeatable results, you genuinely need to be putting yourself in a position where you've got all the tools that you need to use in the workshop. I recently made this massive guillotine tool to go under the power hammer and I made it because I was trying to replace these spring fullers. Now I've been using it but it's been causing me some problems because where as the setup, using these to set the job up and get multiple objects done is really good the finesse and the finishing processes, I'm finding that I need to use these. This is good if I've got 10 hammer blanks waiting to go into the, uh, under the power hammer, get a whole series of jobs done and then let them cool down to go on to the next job, that's fine. But after the point where the mass manufacturing becomes a little bit more fluid and you have to be putting a drift in and then running the flow around the eyes and then doing something else, it kind of slows things down, it makes things more awkward. Also, this wax really hard when it's under the power hammer. I didn't realise how much sensitivity I'm losing because I'm not holding the tool in. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make the tool in that I was going to make in the original video before I decided to make a massive guillotine tool. So I'm going to do that today. Um, over the next couple of days there'll be some more tooling getting made for this as well. So you'll be able to see some other kind of tools that I'm going to use for this. Slightly crazy tools that I think most people are going to think aren't going to work. And they probably aren't knowing me, so anyway. But yeah, I'm going to get on. Uh, I've got a few other bits and bobs to make as well, so I'm just going to cover that in this video. Too. So this is going to be the handle and the springs for the fullers, but I want to get this bit in the middle hot now, and the only way I can do that is if I bend one of these ends up, because they're quite nice to hold on to whilst I'm doing the forging, especially under the power hammer. So I'm going to bend one side up, get this middle bit hot, and then uh, we're going to flatten this bit out into the spring. Okay, so I've got the fuller part made and I'm going to bend this up. I'll video bending this up and then we can talk about the fullers and some bits and bobs that I've done that I think I could have done a bit better, which 
I might go on to do it another time, but I'm not gonna do it now. So I'm gonna get on with these bits, so I'll see you in a minute, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Laziness is definitely a contributing factor in mistake making. Um, I've made a slight calculation error here. I haven't made a calculation error here at all. I was just being lazy um, and I could have used uh, one of these very lovely Champ Ironwork rulers in order to help me find out what size diameter I should have forged this out to before um, pursuing um, <laughs> the craziness that I got myself into. I've put some bends in that I didn't need to do really. But it's going to look okay. It's not great, but it's going to look okay. And these videos are going to be a bit like that. They're, they're ever so slightly rough and ready as opposed to some of the slightly cleaner ones where I would make this again. So anyway, moving forward, uh, Champ Ironworks sells these. I think he's still selling them. I'll have a chat with him before I um, put the video up, but I'll put his Instagram and his website up for these rulers. They're pretty good. They've got inches along the top and then along the bottom, they've got inches of the circumference. So what I could have done is I could have found um, the piece that I was using, measured the circumference, it would have told me that it was seven or eight inches, and then I could have actually forged this out to the right length, as opposed to being a lazy person, which I was. So um, yes, that's a shout out for Champ. Thank you for the ruler. I didn't use it because I was being lazy, um, but I should have done, so there you are. <laughs> anyway, right, uh, next job to do is to cut these bars to the right length so that they're the same, and then I'm gonna um, put a couple of set downs in and then I'm gonna weld these pieces in. I'm gonna get on with that, and I'm gonna talk about these a little bit in a minute. Okay, so this video was all about making tooling that can allow you to make your stuff better. The hammer came out really nice, the spring fillers look awesome, and these drifts worked epically. I'm gonna talk more about this stuff now. Um, so if you're not interested in me talking any more than I already have in this video, then uh, you might wanna find someone else to watch. But if you did enjoy the video still for up to this point, please subscribe, like, and share the video. Comment down below if you did enjoy it. Go and check out the description because there's some links to my Instagram and Etsy where all sorts of other stuff happens and you can get hold of some of this really cool stuff like hammers like these. So go and check those out and thank you for watching and I shall see you next time, I guess. Oh yeah, ring the bell because it tells you when I make videos like these. Okay, so what's the point in tooling up like this? Well, there's two simple reasons. The first one is I want consistent good products to sell to you guys and girls at home. 
And secondly, I need to get some work done without having the students here. Um, I've given myself a bit of a rod for my back because I've done something a bit naughty. What I used to do I was I used to make two or three items the same, put them up on the Etsy and say that there were five of them. So when one sold, I'd make another one. But I can't keep up at the minute because we're selling stuff so fast. So um, yes, um, I'm a bit long-winded, but I want nice, really, really, really sexy stuff to go to people at home. I want you to have the best quality Dan products I can make. That's the whole point of doing this. Um, I enjoy it and hopefully you like the products and you get to enjoy them at home. So I, again, I really apologize for uh, some of the people, some of the weights that you're having to have. Um, it's got so bad at the minute, I cannot make stock fast enough to sell just as blank stock, which is a pain in the bum. And I'm really sorry about that. So um, Ella's helping me as much as she can and I'm trying to develop some tooling. That's why there's some stuff coming in the future. I'm developing some tooling to allow me to get on with some of the work without having a student up here because I didn't realize how much I depend on those guys. So a massive thank you to Elliot, Matt, Sam and Luke who have all been coming up here recently and helping me. They've all gone their separate ways in the minute during this lockdown um, and yeah, best of luck to those guys. Um, I will leave a link to all of their Instagrams in the description. So go and check those out and give them some love and some support and say that Dan needs you because he's useless without you. <laughs> so that would be really nice. Okay, these new videos that I'm doing, uh, basically what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and create a couple of videos in the week where I'm working. So these have kind of been about tooling that I've been gearing up for, being sort of, the pace will be slightly different, I might miss some stuff, you might hear a tractor in the background like you can hear now, uh, or you might not be able to hear it. it so it, there are going to be mistakes in them, there's going to be bloopers, there's going to be things that go wrong, you're going to see raw blacksmithing Dan style. So. Um, yeah, they're going to be rough and ready. They're not going to be edited amazingly, um, but they will be coming with a sense of sort of genuineness and sort of openness, and hopefully you're enjoying that. Please let me know. I would really like some feedback in the comments. You guys are really good at saying, that's good, that's good. You're doing a great job. How do you get your forging so clean? That's lovely. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. However, what I could really do with is some constructive criticism. Someone said it was echoey in here, and I hadn't noticed that before. Maybe it is a bit echoey in here. But anyway, so bear with me whilst I get to the gritty nitty bits of trying to get this right. It's like I made a mistake in this video, therefore I just went with it. I didn't make it again. So normally if I make a mistake where I think, oh, I'll make it again, I'll do it the next day and I'll make it again and get it right. However, this wasn't gonna happen. And I can think of lots of different ways to improve this. Um, I like the drawer out. I should have made this a bit thinner, but um, it's sturdy. And I, I, what I was going for was, Sometimes when you use these, um, they start to slide away from each other, and that's why I've tried to abandon them. However, um, these are help holding up quite nicely. I should have made this ever so slightly bigger, but I haven't, and you know we're in the consequences that we are. And instead of making these freehand, what I should have done is I should have made a fuller, and then I should have upset some bar into, uh, not a fuller, uh, a swage. I should have upset the bar into the swage to make these and then I can produce them a bit more readily, um, which is something that I'm thinking of doing. So also let me know if you're interested in stuff like this because I could possibly make it if I can tool up a little bit. Um, Why duplicates? Why have I doubled up on the drifts? Well, I can keep them cooler. They last longer. They don't start getting damaged by the power hammer. Um, I get through drifts. Uh, I probably make 20 to 30 hammers with one drift. They're knackered, I can't use them. And they just go all of a sudden. And it's normally because I've made a mistake. So I'm hoping I can keep both of these in the tank, keep them nice and cold and get, rotate through and then at the end pick one or the other and then use that to drift both sides so it looks the same. So that seemed to work really well, so that was good. Um, and God, I've had a bad spate of hammer making. I really hate sending stuff out of this workshop that looks awful. And some of the hammers that are in the scrap at the minute are absolute crap, it's just started raining. Um, and the problem I was having was I couldn't really judge what was going on with the, uh, the big um, blacksmith's helper, the, the guillotine tool, and it was giving me a lot of problems. However, she is a beauty. She's come out really lovely, this hammer, and I've made a couple of them now, and I can get some stock out to people that are waiting patiently. Thank you once again. And like I said, I've been a bit naughty. I shouldn't have done what I've done, but thank you for waiting. This video hopefully will be out tonight, and all, if you're waiting for a kit, 
I will guarantee that they'll be gone by Monday because um, I'm I'm on it now and Ella's come up and helped and she can help me tomorrow and do some other bits and bobs. If this is in the future, then none of these times and dates will mean anything to you. <laughs> so, uh, but the next video will be the uh, making the Damascus scent punches on the next one. Um, and yeah, that bit will be a bit cleaner and a bit tidier and a bit, um, a bit more tutorial based. There was one other thing I just quickly wanted to talk about. I said I was going to try and get five videos up a week and I did initially try to do that. However, I have a slight issue with editing a video and then uploading it and then putting it on YouTube all in one night because where we've moved to, we've got really bad internet. I don't want to say that too loudly in case someone hears me who might know. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a bad internet. I'm trying to work on it at the minute. I think we're going to get some 4G wireless stuff going on, which should be a bit better. However, it's taken me nearly two and a half, three hours to upload a video. So if I finish it, uh, finish working here at like six o'clock, it takes me about two hours to edit a video, have something to eat, have a shower, then try and get it up on, oh, it just, just takes forever. It's taking like five, six hours to just get a video made and up. So, it's a bit of a pain in the bum, and I apologise, I, I am going to try and make more content, there's so much stuff going on, there's some really cool stuff going on, I've got some really cool projects coming up, so uh, yeah, I'm, re I'm, really, I'm really trying, uh, this sh I'm going to say it now, there should be three videos this week, so not five, <laughs> I knew I'd fail, I don't know why I said anything, I'm probably going to mess that up now. Right, um, I'm going to think I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, please ring that bell for notifications because it tells you every time I make a video. I make videos as often as possible and try really hard to get that sort of stuff done at the minute. Um, if you did like the video, let me know down in the comments. Leave a comment, tell me what you thought of the video, all that good stuff. And then also go into the description in there. There's some links to those Etsy's. Go and check out all of the Etsy's of Matt and uh, Elliot and all those guys. Uh, and then also go and check out my Instagram. I've been keeping sort of tracks and playing little games and getting people ask questions and doing a bit extra. Whilst I'm up here all the time, I might as well take advantage of being able to take some nice pictures and bits and bobs every now and then. So go and check out the Instagram, share this video, um, go over to the website, the Etsy's down there as well. Go and check that out. The Etsy's full of cool stuff where you can buy hammers and punches and keep supporting me like this and I'll be able to do more and more of this. I'm so stoked with the amazing amount of support you guys and girls at home have been giving me. Um, uh, that is everything. Thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to a video that YouTube thinks you will like. This is the most recently uploaded video. Down here, I know this off by heart, I should be able to do it. Down here is a video that I've picked for you and there's the subscribe button. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye.